And for us, good road win. A lot of positives to build on, we think. Uh, got a lot of work and improvement that we need to keep doing. Uh, we did have uh, what we felt was solid contributions in all three phases, uh, which we need. You need that on the road. We'll need it in conference play. I think we've had that a couple weeks. Uh, we need got to continue to advance in all phases. We need young players to continue to enhance their role. I think we got a lot of young first and second year players. We're playing some, but special teams are more significant um, part of the rotation, whether it be our skill players at receiver, or some of our young linemen, D linemen, just we got to keep bringing some guys along and they need to practice better so the coaches will get them on the field, I think would help us a ton. Um, so anyway, for what that's worth, um, special teams played a game last week. We uh, recognized both our kickers. Eric Toth had four kicks inside the 20. Gave his coverage team a chance to do a great job in covering. Um, Griffith Oaks, uh, again, was perfect with the, with the elements. And I think I give some credit there to both our snappers, too. We got two new snappers there with uh, uh, both um, uh, Godsell and Goodell. One's kind of a short snapper. One, they're both good using both of those. Uh, our hold guy here did a great job managing the holds for, uh, for Griffith. Uh, his uh, Griff, uh, Griff's kicks were, were very, very good, too. So with the elements, thought that was a big part. Uh, our ball security was pretty good. Uh, we did have one holding call, and we had a critical error on the um, uh, onside kick where we just didn't execute something that's very fundamental and simple. We do, and we just had a young man mess up that we need to get corrected. Uh, defensively, players at the game, we recognize two guys, uh, Andre Brown and T. Gray Scales. Several good performances up front with some pressure with Mangieri and Latham. thought Marcus Oliver played very, very well. So I had a lot of uh, – Chase Dutra played well. I thought a lot of guys played better. Um, we recognized three guys, our scout players of the week. Uh, we had Xander Diamant running around a little bit last week. We thought that, that they would play their athletic quarterback. So uh, he um, – was, uh, did a lot of things that we do that kind of fit their scheme. Uh, also, Danny Cameron. So both the quarterbacks, I thought, gave us a good look. And uh, Alex Rodriguez, uh, our running back, did kind of back. All three of those guys are kind of travel guys that are backups, but did a great job in our preparation. That's great to see. Defensively, we did have five three and outs, and we started the game with three in a row. Uh, the offense needed to capitalize that because um, we didn't. And all of a sudden, after three three and outs and we're up, it becomes a 7-7 game. We had a chance to gain some early momentum. It would have been nice to have capitalized offensively when we didn't. We were better on third down D last week. We did have a pick six, which was the difference in the game. We were able to create a little bit better pressure, which had been missing. Unfortunately, we did have five huge penalties, uh, two pass interference and three personal fouls. That needs to get uh, uh, out of our football. Uh, we thought we uh, maybe relaxed or didn't finish, didn't like 31-10, and we down a punt inside the 10-yard line. Matter of fact, I believe the offense started inside the three and went across midfield and bogged down, but had a nice punt from Eric. It's 31-10, to and we got him pinned inside the 10, and the defense had a chance to close it out and did it. They need to step up there. Offensive, our players at the game, uh, we had two, Dan Feeney, who played really well, and Jordan Howard, who's been very solid for us all year. And we recognize one young scout team player, Amari Stringer, and it was great for Amari to see that. We need him to, as a young guy, to keep developing. Offense positives, no tur turnovers was huge. Uh, continue to build on that, especially with the weather and on the road. And, and again, that takes everyone. Sometimes that's just backside protection, center, center quarterback exchange. Um, it's blitz pickup, so your quarterback's not getting hit. It's, it's receivers spacing routes when you're when – you're, when you're not turning the ball over, it's just not the guy with the ball. There's, it's it's a, a function of the entire team, and and um, that's that's been a very positive part for our team this year. Third downs were better. We charted us at seven to sixteen. We don't count that knee. We take it in to make it seven to seventeen. You mathematical guys will say that hurts our percentage, but when it's third down, you take a knee the last play of the game, and it's a non-conversion. We we don't use that in our stats. FY, it's two of them this year, so you. We, we think our third down stats are slightly better than what you got on paper, FYI. Uh, we are not in sync as an offense, though. We still keep sputtering and just we could be so much better, and it's, it's disappointing yet encouraging because there's a lot of good things going on, but we just got to keep working. I think it's offensive football. It's just, you know, it's just hard to stay in rhythm all the time and just keep your run game in balance and play action and making big plays and third down conversions. So there's a lot of good, but we just got to keep working to play better in all phases. Perimeter blocking's got to pick up, perimeter play. 
after the fake punt, I think the offense was in the same situation the defense was. They had the ball at midfield, and we went three and out. And we had a chance really there again to really extend the lead and try to put it away, and we didn't. And we had a chance to close that game out. We didn't. Uh, against Florida International, we had a couple chances and didn't. Against Western Kentucky, we did. Now against Wake Forest, we didn't close it out. So in our mind, we're one of three as an offense, one out of three in closing games out. we got to be better there. Uh, health of our team is pretty good. Um, again, we're playing hard, and, and I like our physical approach, and we got to keep building on that. Uh, updated with the two guys in the game. Ricky Jones has a slight ankle. He should progress and be good. Again, we, we, we don't, don't do much on Sundays. We lift and, and, and get an intro. We'll see how he goes through the week. I think he's played enough that he don't need a ton of rest, but it looks like he'll be, he'll be good. Danny Friend's got a knee. We're still evaluating that. It's not major, but I think he's going to going be a while. He'd probably be out uh, probably doubtful this week and, and might be a couple. And I think we'll look to see. Can it be managed? I don't think it's, again, a major deal, but can it be managed without a – a minor surgery they're just looking to see how he progresses here a few days so uh, we'll see what's up with Danny so but anticipate Ricky not sure on Danny uh, and then moving on uh, to Ohio State uh, again very very good team in all areas uh, number one in the nation longest win streak in the country those aren't flukes uh, they're complete you talk about all the players shoot their punter is as good as anyone got us last year I mean they're great in the kicking game their defense, their front, their aggressiveness, their, cover, their coverage, tremendous linebackers, offensively a boatload of skill, and depth, and playmakers, offensive line, you know, well coached. Coach Myers is as good as anyone and his staff and what goes on. So a lot of talent and um, a very, very strong, strong opponent. It is good to be at home, and we look forward to just having a strong week of preparation. Uh, we're, we're into it now. We look forward to having a good week. and. Uh, See if we can continue to improve. Excited to get up with our guys and just see if they want to keep working each week and getting better. And you know, we'll get a strong challenge as we start Big Ten play this week. Again, you know, they made a structural change, not really necessarily structural, but uh, the core of their defensive coaches are there. But with Coach Ash coming in and, and their other coaches, they brought uh, Coach Johnson in from Penn State, but uh, we know Coach Combs and Coach Fickle well. So they got a great core group of guys. Again, they're very aggressive up front, know where they're going, outstanding at linebacker. And they're, they're good enough in the secondary that they challenge coverage. They don't give you a lot of easy throws. I mean, every play is competitive. Every play is aggressive. Um, they're very, very sound and, and very, very talented and come at you. And that doesn't mean blitzing. They just play very, very you know, they'll blitz. But, I mean, they, you know, they just um, very aggressive in their approach and, and some things we like to get to and are trying to get to and a lot of similarities in the style that Michigan State plays. Where, again, you know, very stout up front, very aggressive at linebacker, and they don't give you a lot of easy throws. They make you, uh, they make you go the distance. They make you earn it. Well, uh, one um, different opponent. I do, I do think, you know, uh, we were able to get a couple hits at our quarterback. You know, we had one kid last week had gotten hurt prior to our game. We got a good shot on him early, and I think that limited him, their desire to maybe run him. Now, this week, you know, you've got several quarterbacks. Uh, you know, Jones, the big kid, you can really run and throw it. And, and JT Barrett's a great player, so there's always going to be a running threat, which is, which is harder to defend. Um, uh, you know, I, I thought, our, you know, we're going to play a much – Stouter offensive line, one of the better offensive lines in the country. I thought last week our defensive line could match up well. Um, we got some pressure on them, but um, I mean, we've just tried to to get our guys to play harder, and uh, we made some subtle changes in what we're doing. But we have so much to clean up, um, again, so many errors and so many correctable, fixable things that um, we're going to keep pushing for defensive. It was good to see. Um, and again, there's you know, in this day and age of college football, there are, you know, a couple teams last week I think were up by a few points and loss, we almost did. You got to keep playing. I mean, the ball can get out in space and get downfield and people throw the ball well enough. And you can extend games in college because that clock stops so much with the first downs and the passing game that there's a lot of football to play. So even though we had a lot of negatives, we were hanging on for dear life. And uh, it's a, you know, we got to continue to work to be better. So um, I think the defensive front's pretty good. If we can keep them getting lined up and know where to go and, and the linebackers are, are, are getting better. So It'll be it'll be it'll be it'll be different with Ohio State now getting a bunch of negative plays. That ball's they got a bunch of good playmakers. One after the first game that's been embraced a little bit. Yeah, so we're just going. I just want to be a little bit more. I like to be 
That doesn't mean bliss. I just like to be, know what you're doing and be assertive and be aggressive. And we've just tried to take that approach. And we're building from that. Now, we've got a long way to go. We still have a lot of correctable, fixable things, lack of trust, confidence, where I'm supposed to be, communication. Uh, it's a work in progress. But there's, a, there's enough talent that we ought to be playing better defense than we're playing. And it's encouraging. And it's things we can build on. But, but, but we're, we're going to keep working and finding the comfort level with players and coaches and, and just how to, keep, how to keep putting together, give our team a chance. Thing was, I guess, especially along that pass rush, they've talked about how they feel like there's been a lot of improvement. And I think Coach McDaniel even said last week that the next step for him was just needed to translate into sacks. It needed to translate into physical production. Was it important, maybe the timing of having a game like that for that group going into Big Ten play, finally getting all that to click and really landing some of those some of those pressures? Um, I still think yes, but I still think watching us that we're still uh, too slow. Uh, at the line of scrimmage and too slow in our blitzing and, and it's not as uh, as assertive or as aggressive as it needs to be. And uh, we, we were just this morning discussing with that, like even though that was good to see, that it could be so much better. I think our offense is playing reasonably okay, but could be so much better. To me, that's encouraging things is is that we're, we, we, we're not playing our best, but yet we're still seeing a lot of good things. So it's kind of, you know, when you're playing bad, you can say you can always get better. Well, we're playing... We're playing pretty good in spots, and if we could just kind of keep sinking and working and getting it together. So, Zach, that was good to get the pressure and good to have some of those plays, but I don't think it's close to what it can be and what they're capable of just with their ability to get lined up, get their cleats in the ground, get their eyes on their target, and and, and, and go sick it a little bit. So we're going to keep working on that. There's a, it's, it's better, but it's a long way from what I think it ought to be. And we're going to keep working on that. I think we do, although I think sometimes, though, you know, for example, like I'm on their coaches about playing them, but then sometimes the way they practice, their coaches are right because they're very inconsistent, and you're built just to count on me. Trust me. I mean, I just, you know, I got mental bust or, yeah, hey, you know, I, you know, when a young guy plays well one week, where's he at the next week? He thinks he's figured it out. When, you know, the older you get, you realize, you know, I'm really not that good. I'm not that bad. I just got to keep working. I got to keep getting better. When you're a young player, you get those peaks and valleys and highs and lows, and like, to me, we just need kids like Thornton and Westbrook. We've been playing Donovan Hale outside. We need to get them guys on the field, but they got to practice better. You know, Jamil Cook's played some, but needs to get out there more. Um, I think, you know, we played Jacob Robinson, Brandon Knight. We need, we need those guys to keep coming. And um, to me, again, that's, that's, that's a part of their approach to practice. So I think there's ta – they're, they're, matter of fact, I think we're playing guys that are not as talented as them, but they don't consistently show that you can count on them to do the job. So they've got the skill set. We're just asking them as young men, embrace the process, buy in, pay attention, practice better so we can get you on the field because we need them on the field. But they need to earn that right. Is that a maturity thing at some level, or is it maybe seeing experienced guys in front of them and, and needing to remind them that just because a guy's a, a junior or a senior and he's got all these starts doesn't mean we can't beat him out? I don't know about beating out as much. You just got to play a lot of guys. That's why we don't get caught up in the depth chart like you guys do. Where was Tony Fields? Saturday he was in the end zone. You need guys like that. Just keep playing, keep practicing. You don't know when you're going to be called upon, you know. And and you just you know you just you know just keep coming as a team. And you're in a society where everybody wants it now. You know, everybody's got to get the ball, get their touches. How you know who starts? Who do they? You know, just you know we got to you know we're, we're talking to guys like um, you know Robert McRae who's coming off an injury. I need you, he needs he's he's a more productive player than we've seen yet. We need to get Will Dawkins in the mix and get on the field for us and get out there playing for us. We haven't. See them. We need Jordan Fuchs to keep practicing well and get on the field and play for us. Let along Thornton and Westbrook, and I'm talking about Tyler Green. I'm talking about Brandon Wilson. We got some guys that really need to come on for this football team, and I like to see them. I'm pushing their coaches, but but those kids got to back it up with the way they prepare. And like I say, we'll be a better football team if you continue to get by in and guys just embrace their roles and enhance the roles by the way they practice. Don't worry about beating somebody out. Just be the best you can be, and we'll we'll get you on the field. You've talked a lot about confidence, just having more confidence than you seemed to last season. Who's this? Simi. Um, is, is it as simple as confidence for him, or are you seeing anything different as far as technique or just approach? Well, and now he's older and stronger, and, um, you know, just I just more comfortable. He's played more. So, um, you know, the more confident you are, you better to play. The better you play, the more confidence you get. It's a little bit of both, which comes first. So sometimes you just got to play through that. And that's with some of these young guys. you got to play You got to play through that with them a little bit as coaches, but they got to play through that and practice and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday gets them on the fields. And then you go out there in the field, and there's going to be some errors. 
you know, and and uh, but but Simi's played through it, but he's got a long way to go. He could be so much better. He's uh, he still had several miss, even though he made a few catches and his numbers look good. He had some significant miscues Saturday with just alignments and responsibilities, but he can play a lot better, and we're going to mm -hmm. keep working with him on that. It's kind of instinctual nature to kind of be able to make those plays just on instinct too. I mean, is, is he have the kind of instincts that you like to see right now, or is he? Hey, okay. I don't think he's the most instinctive skill kid we've got. I mean, he's okay. He's not, you know, I just, you know, he's, he's, um, I think he's like a lot of kids that I don't know how much ball he's really played. I think there's a lot of upside. I think the more he plays, the, the better, and more natural and instinctive he'll get. Uh, you would think, uh, I think he is, um, like several of our players on defense, um, sometimes can um, freelance a little and not maybe be where he's supposed to be that can haunt you. So there's sometimes where he looks to make the sack instead of continuing in his rush lane and closing down a passing window, he'll, he'll, he'll peek inside because he's wanting so hard to get the statistical stat versus playing within the concept and structure of the defense. And there's some, some times on defense where sometimes we let some protections go longer than they should, or some of our rush guys start looking to make the play versus just attacking the defender and running the twist or running the stunt and being a gap and kicking tail. So, you know, sometimes our defensive guys, because we haven't played good D statistically for quite a while, some of our good players try to make plays versus just doing your job and let the structure make the play. And uh, he, he can make some plays, but we would be a lot better if, if, if he can keep his focus on just doing his job consistently. He would make more plays, and that, quite honestly, he's not hurt us, but our defense would be better if he and a lot of those guys would just be more consistent in being where they're supposed to be. They're sometimes hitting 70, 80 percent where they ought to be, and, some of, and when you're playing a position he plays, that thing ought to be 90, 95, 98 percent because, hey, man, it's A-gap or B-gap. You know, I'm, 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 I'm inside or outside the Gardner tackle. It's not, there's not a whole lot of deal, the movement here. It's I'm, hit a gap and hit it hard and you're big and strong and talented. So he can make some plays because he's an athlete, but we need him and Mangieri and Ralph and those guys and Darius to continue to be structurally better so we can be more sound. That's a little bit of our Achilles heel, I think. talk about camaraderie in practice because um, sometimes I worry about that youthfulness where some of those older guys get like you're talking about I can't beat out uh, old guys well a bunch of freshmen beat out some old guys in the secondary starting you know for what it's worth you know and and so um, it's nice for him, for him to say there is some camaraderie because sometimes you worry about that because everybody wants to get on the field in this little selfish world that we live in so I think we've done a lot more maybe off the field with the camaraderie of, of just getting them together and different little things to do, whether it be a meal at a coach's house or some functions like that. And then when we get out there to practice, we, we talk about more about competition and competing more than, than com camaraderie and high-fiving and all that stuff. So, you know. 520 yards a game and 38 points, and yet the offense isn't where you think it could be. What's your definition of success for that group then? I think we leave um, – we've had a chance – to finish some games or get some games more in the balance that we've we've just floundered around a little bit. You know, we've been there's a physicalness in the run game. We 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 probably aren't as as good at some chunk plays as we need to get. You know, we haven't had a lot of long runs and passes, quite honestly. Um, so we're using that tight end group and that O line group and those backs, okay. But you know, when you get into Big Ten play, you're going to get matched up against defenses. We're not going to overpower people. You got to have that balance. You got when you cross that mid midfield stripe, you got to get points on the board. And I just feel Terry, there's some games we're leaving, you know, seven, ten, thirteen, fourteen, seventy points on the board. That'll, that'll get you once in a while. You know, we're you're talking to with with a friend, and we're just talking about, you know, you know, I I think our defense is doing better, but it's got a long way to go. But there's just certain games you're going to be in, no matter who you are. I'm looking at TCU and some of these teams that play great defense. Sometimes college ball is getting where you you, you can't break serve. You know, or it's like a basketball game. You got to keep matching baskets, and you got to get a stop once. So, I mean, you know, I I don't know if if a lot of games are going to be seventeen to nine anymore. So it it comes down to just points. I just think we keep leaving some points. And when you're playing a great team like Ohio State, I mean, a couple years ago, I think we I think we had it seven times across the thirty-five. We didn't score, and that's not a good formula.
Monte Williams uh, is trying to try new things on the position of game? Yeah, and, th and shoot, Ohio State's probably the best in the conference at kick coverage with the athletes they got, what they do in the kicker. You know, but I, I think the other, as of a week ago, Devontae was number two in the league in, in kick coverage. You know, the best thing to do if you just take a knee and put him with 25, you know, is, is really the best thing to do right now. So, you know, and of course, some of these guys are kicking it high enough to the one or two. And we brought one out the other day, and we even told our guy, listen, in bad weather, and if it's in, stay in. He brought one out, but he was so close to the line, he didn't know he made a decision. And I agreed for what he I said, what did you He said, I wasn't sure. I said, great call. I like it because you ain't got time to sit around and look. And then build up speed. He said, I wasn't sure where I was at, coach. I wasn't being greedy. I just thought I was at the line, so I took off. I said, good deal. And so, you know, right now, though, I mean, last week with all the rugby kicking they were doing, we were, we were as worried as much about a ball hitting someone last week with some things they were doing. So I really thought, I really thought our punt return team was awesome last week and had no returns. But we saw something extremely unusual, worked at it hard. We'll get similar stuff to Ohio State. And, um, I think the return games, I, th I think you got to be better in, in coverage right now than returning. And all you got to do in returning is make sure you're smart enough that you manage field position and you don't turn the ball over. I think that holding penalty we had was, was more critical than anything else that we had last week. It made us start a drive inside the 10. Gordon was a guy, I think Nate described him as, as smarter than, than people would think just because he's kind of quiet, and, and, and he really, but he really understands football really well. Have you seen that manifest itself, maybe even just beyond his position, just kind of has – a level of football savvy or awareness that, yeah. that exceeds his age? Very much. And one, I mean, to say, I mean, no matter a guy being quiet, that's just his personality. I mean, Coach McCullough doesn't say much. He's a very smart guy. I mean, uh, coming out of Jordan's home, that's a very well-raised, educated, uh, that was one of the best homes I've been in a long time as far as his background. That kid come, is, is well-raised. His mom has a phenomenal presence. Unfortunately, his father passed years ago, and we never met him. But uh, that's a very mature kid, very smart kid. I think it translates into football. And football-wise, I think he's a very, very good, very talented, but I think he's a very, very good player on game day. He's, he's, got, he's got a nice feel for himself. He's only played four games here, though, and I know he, he did a lot down there. We'll just see if we can keep him going. Got to keep complimenting Devine. I think Devine does a nice job. We got to keep bringing those backs along. Just to follow up, sorry, with Lewis, their running style, how important is it that they do complement each other? And, and you kind of talked about today that – it lets them both stay fresh, and, and as, as much as they can be physical with the defense, having two of them so that neither one of them maybe wears down too much early in the game, and you have still maybe some freshness into the third and fourth quarters with the power run game. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's nothing new, because like the only time we haven't had two here is when we didn't have two. We had Steven and, and, and um, Tevin, and then we had Tevin and D'Lo. And now, I mean, you know, I mean, you look in the pro game, you got, you got to have those guys take a pounding. And it's not just fresh for the game, it's fresh for the season. And I really think the great thing, I think Coach McCullough has a great knack of how to prepare them and practice them and have them go hard, but he doesn't wear them out. And I think he does a tremendous job of preparing his kids during the week to get them to give them a chance to play really, really good football.